Lakeland Public Television presents Currents. Hello, welcome to Lakeland Currents. I'm Bethany Wesley. In 2008, the Minnesota legislature revised state statutes to allow an airport authority to have taxing authority. The idea was that such a move would provide airports with more stable funding year to year and also aid in opening opportunities for further improvements. That following year, effective January 1, 2009, the Bemidji Regional Airport transitioned from being a joint city and county owned and operated airport to one owned and operated by an airport authority with its own tax levy and funding responsibilities. This was done to provide additional visibility of the airport financial structure and costs to the communities it supports. Tonight, we welcome to the program Karen Weller, the Executive Director of the Bemidji Regional Airport Authority, and Ron Johnson, one of five members of the Bemidji Regional Airport Authority. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Great. So as we get started, Karen, would you just give us a little bit of background in terms of what your role is with the airport and how that's kind of evolved over the years? Sure. I'm currently the Executive Director of the Airport Authority. I started in um, August of 2009 as an Administrative Assistant and then in 2014 was made the Executive Director when the former Director left. Okay. Interesting. And Ron, I know you've been on the Airport Commission before it was the Authority and now the Authority for several years. When did you first join the Board? Well, I was elected to the City Council in the fall of 2000 and uh, sworn in as the City Councilor on January of, of 2001, and one of my first appointments was to the represent Bemidji on the Airport Commission that was jointly owned at the time by Bemidji and Bemidji City Council and the county. And I've been on it ever since uh, through the transition to the authority, and uh, I'm still on it today. When you first joined, did you have an interest in the airport, or was it just kind of they just dole out assignments? Uh, or? It, actually, they just kind of assigned. I was just assigned it. I didn't have any specific idea, but I was appointed to it, and it, it's very interesting. And there's a, a steep learning curve to be on the airport. So <laughs> once you're on it, uh, they kind of like to keep you if, if you're interested. So. Sure. Okay. So let's go back to that the, before the authority existed, when it was the Bemidji Regional Airport Commission, correct? So yes. how, how did it operate at that time? It was, uh, actually we had no uh, executive director and no manager. It was part of the duties of our city manager to actually manage the airport also. And I'd say maybe you gave it a, maybe a half a day a week, you know, and, and all of the financials and that were, were done by city staff. And part of our contribution was in kind. And so it was, uh, it was really uh, managed as just one of the departments. And it was one of the line items in the city budget. So. Uh, uh, it's much different. When, when the, that current city manager, uh, Phil Shealy, when he left, uh, that's when we, uh, the, the new manager wasn't going to be also the airport manager. That was part of the uh, job description. And that's when we looked for a manager. airport manager. <laughs> and that's when Harold Van Leeuwen was hired. But the commission at the time was kind of this, similar in that there was two from the city and two from the county and then yeah. one. One at large. At large, okay. Yeah. And so the budget was set by the commission then or by the city council and the county board? The budget was set by the commission and it was split 50-50 between the city taxpayers and the county taxpayers. Okay. And so you would go back to your respective boards right. and update yeah. them on what the commission had talked about? Yeah, and because it was just really a line item in our general fund, uh, it was at the mercy of being cut just like any other department, the parks or this, and, uh, and so it, there wasn't a real stable uh, budget source because the county had also a lot of things to deal with so oftentimes we weren't even on the same page somebody might want to raise something or or supply a matching portion of a federal or a state grant and maybe the money wasn't there in the city or vice versa so it was uh, uh, it was kind of a sometimes a little bit hard to, to manage the budget uh, mm -hmm. with two sure. different governing bodies because the way it works sometimes is that a, a grant or an opportunity for expansion or a project will come up and you know you have time to discuss it, but you usually have to make that five percent or a local match. And if you went back to the city and the city's like, "Ooh, we're in tough times," and vice versa for the county. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it was. Uh, we never seemed to be on the same page. The city went through, as you know, uh, back in the mid 2006, 2007. We had a lot of cuts to our local government aid, and so uh, airport was part of the mix mm -hmm. back then. And so uh, it was. It was time to look at a different, more stable funding source. Do you recall where that first idea, who first started kind of bantering about, wouldn't it be nice if we could just keep this 
as an authority? Well, you know, it was it was because we were having problems uh, getting together on financing. Uh, I know Marshall Freud and I, uh, we were on the airport commission for a long time. We actually started talking about it and uh, wondering if there was a way to establish a taxing authority. And we got then Representative Doug Fuller to start looking into uh, legislation that might enable that to happen. And to my knowledge, we're the first one. I think that, Karen, we, we spoke earlier, I think we were the first airport uh, taxing authority. And now there are other cities that have felt the same way and have followed suit. So, okay. uh, But yeah, we, we got that started probably around 2004 or five, and it took a while to get the legislation. And then once we did have the ability, it took a while to then convince both bodies that that's the direction we should oh, go. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So as a manager, the executive director, you report then to the, the airport authority Correct. itself. Okay. Yep. So then I know that it was a little bit prior to your time, a little bit, but as it would have worked before with the commission, is you would have gone to the commission, the commission kind of meets with you, and then they get their direction from other boards. So is this a little bit easier then for, for a manager, for yourself, to kind of know exactly who's kind of driving the change in direction of the airport? Sure, well, from what I understand, um, it, it certainly is a lot easier. I mean, I, I have one board to answer to, whereas before you'd have two boards to answer, well, actually three, you know, the airport and then the city council and county commission. Um, and so it, it definitely is, is easier. Okay, interesting. Now, when Fuller, the representatives down at the legislature were hearing these ideas, do you remember getting a lot of concerns or comments or they were just working through the process? I think that they felt it made a lot of sense. You know, part, part of it was a stable funding source, but part of it was a little bit of a fairness issue, too. You know, when you think about it, the, the city, was, city taxpayers were paying half of the operation, and then the county was paying the other half, but a third of those people paying it were city residents. So. In essence, they were paying two thirds for a 50-50 airport. So, in a way, it, it was it's a fairer to have a, a taxing authority be the county, uh, and uh, and then it certainly was stable funding source. But it, they felt they enable the legislation for it to happen. But we still had to get both the county and the city uh, governing boards to go to along with it. So, uh, uh, so it still isn't mandated. <laughs> so it just uh, if the, if that they feel it will work. And I know, I think Thief River has adopted it and some other airports throughout the state have followed suit. So I think it does make some sense. And uh, it certainly provides a lot more stable funding. And that's really the reason we did it. Before it went into effect, the people that were contributing toward the operation were city residents and Beltrami County. Has that footprint changed at all? Is it still just the county then that is taxed for the airport? It is. Okay. Yeah, and we do have the ability to expand. Okay. Uh, you know, we have, we have done some studies on who uses our airport, and frankly, there are more people that use it from Hubbard and from Cass and from Clearwater than probably the northern part of the county that's paying for it, you know. <laughs> so it would make some sense maybe down the line <clears throat> if you might see other counties join our taxing authority, or they might just create one of their own, but in some cases it might make sense. I know that Karen has some experience with the Metro where they have multiple airports uh, within an authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How would that work? Let's just say hypothetically another community came in that had an airport that existed, a smaller one. Would it then become just part of the airports you would manage? Would it just become an additional airport that you could manage? That's the way I anticipate that it would be. Um, that entity would then get representation on the board and then the day-to-day -day operations would just be folded into our authority and go from there. <coughs> okay. Could you give, elaborate a little bit on your history? You've alluded that you kind of have some familiar, familiarity with this. Where did that come from? What is your previous experience? Well, I, right out of college, I worked at Houston Intercontinental Airport, and then I worked in San Antonio Airport for about a year. But then my rec most recent experience is the Metropolitan Airports Commission. I was there for almost 18 years, and that's called the MAC, or the Metropolitan Airports Commission. They have, they manage seven airports. It's MSP, the largest airport, and then six what they call reliever airports around the seven, I think they've expanded it to a, like 11 county metro area now. And uh, interestingly enough, they do have taxing authority, but that's one thing they've never had to do. They've oh. been able to raise revenue through various sources to fund the air all of the airports, actually. Okay, interesting. How important is, let's talk about Bemidji, how important is the Bemidji Airport to the Bemidji and Beltrami County area? Is there a, 
Well, it's pretty important to the state. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but we're the fourth busiest airport in the state of Minnesota. You have Minneapolis, St. Paul, then you have Duluth, mm -hmm. then you have Rochester, mm -hmm. and okay. then we're fourth. Okay. So it's uh, it's 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 pretty important to the state, but it's it's very important to the uh, the city and the surrounding area. I know Karen has some statistics as far as economic impact, but it's it's quite large. Have they looked into? the economic impact of the airport previously just to kind of see what kind of funds those bring in? Yep, in 2009 they used a, a tool developed by the University of Minnesota as an economic impact uh, calculator and at the time it was about 27 million dollars uh, economic impact in the region. Now I mean that isn't revenue generated, it's the dollars that start at the airport and then kind of trickle down because you've got people that work at the airport but then they go and buy cars and buy food and clothes and houses and things like that. But then you've also got businesses that um, use services in the area. And so the, that economic impact to the region was 27 million in 2009. It's a big number. I mean, it makes you really kind of pay attention. Um, from that same study, I think they said the airport contributes to almost 450 jobs, if I remember correctly? Yep, through that economic impact. Okay. I mean, the, recently um, we've got about 15 employers actually on the airport, and they provide about 60 full-time jobs and 151 part-time jobs. Okay, interesting. So do you have any ideas as to where that future might kind of be for the airport? Do you see it potentially expanding? I, are those conversations ongoing now, or is that just something to keep in mind for later down the road? We're, we're, we're talking right now about expanding mm -hmm. uh, our hangars. So general aviation is, is something that we would like to uh, uh, improve on and expand. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, a lot of demand for airports. A lot, of, a lot of companies have their own private planes, but a lot of uh, pilots in the area that uh, having, uh, they have their airports in other airports around the area, like in Walker and in, in, in Park Rapids and some of those airports. So it'd be nice to, uh, to start help to grow our, our general aviation because that's a big part of the economic impact also. Mm -hmm. In recent years, I know the airport has really gone down some pretty dramatic changes and expansions. I think it was in 2008 they redid all the runways, correct? And correct. then in 2009 they did the electrical work, some of the electrical infrastructure? Yep, yeah. the entire rewiring of the airfield okay. when the runways were re-shifted. Um, uh, okay. Yep. And then in 2012, I'm sorry, 2011, when the ter terminal rehabilitation project started, and then there was a total redo of the parking lot and some navigational aids as well. So as you've gone through the process for these improvements more recently, has it been smoother, perhaps, having the authority versus the commission previously, or? Well, it has, so? but you know, even, even the management uh, was necessary because uh, one of the reasons we, uh, had to change the runway was because we hadn't paid a lot of attention to zoning and so we uh, uh, the airport was in trouble even getting grants because we were so close to all the buildup of the Walmart right off the end of okay. the runway so uh, the runway extension or the shift was important just to keep us being a viable airport in that location okay. and then of course we had to do the cross runway and then the airport terminal came along afterwards so uh, uh, but yeah, it's a lot easier now, I think, getting those grants to continue the growth and continue the expansion because we're in control. The money we're raising through the authority stays in the airport okay. and allows us a little bit more flexibility. And, and for taxpayers, would you say it's more transparent now, exactly what funds are going to the airport for what purposes? Oh, it sure is. Uh, you know, when it was just part of the city budget, it was just one of the departments. A lot of people see the taxes go up or taxes go down, but they don't know that necessarily the police and fire or the parks are going up or down or the airport's going up or down. Now, if the airport is uh, raising so much money, that's what we're spending. And this year, we're actually lowering our levy by a little bit. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not like just because we have taxing authority, we just tax, tax, <laughs> tax. You know, we're actually, uh, we still, uh, we have to watch it because uh, everything we raise, we have to uh, justify and, and that's what we spend. Yeah. Do you hear more or less from residents since it's taken place? Like, do they get their tax statements and call you and say, why am I being taxed for the airport? Well, I haven't heard anything like okay. that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, No, I haven't gotten yeah. any calls either. No, no. <laughs> I've yeah. always been curious, you know, one, one yeah. year it's not there and the next year it shows up and, you know. I'm on the HRDC too and there's a little line item for that also. I, we don't get anybody asking about that either. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're so, they're so nominal yeah. compared yeah, to is. the larger 
the larger agencies. Yeah, so. I mean, when you look at it, it's it's generally you know fifteen to twenty dollars. Yeah. And what we try to you know somebody may say, well, I don't fly out of the airport, so I don't use it. So why should I pay that? But the big thing is they bring in um, every week specialized doctors. Uh, to the hospital here, so if people see specialists, they don't have to travel to Fargo to see specialists. Um, blood is flown in several times a week. There's lots of businesses, there's lots of cargo. And so to try and, and show people that there are other things that happen at the airport rather than just getting on a commercial flight. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting point because people think of the airport and they think of the, the planes that come mm -hmm. through two times a day with the you know passengers, but it's actually more than that. What are the numbers on the employments, you know, give or take, if in round bar, monthly? The employments for 2015 were just over 24,000. Wow. And we think there's probably, you know, between 10 to 15 general aviation operations per day as well. Okay. And so that's somebody coming in on a, a private plane um, coming to do their business here in Bemidji and then getting on their plane and going back home. Or somebody that has a business based here in Bemidji and say wants to go visit their store that they have located in another part of the state, another, uh, in another state, um, they can do that and then be home for dinner. Mm -hmm. Oh, so interesting. Um, since the change took place and you went to the airport authority, you know, I know you said that you kind of had to sell to a certain degree. You had to, you know, talk to the city council and the county board to kind of get them to sign on. Since it's taken place, we're now you know going into seven years now. Have you heard any concerns from either board since? Well, we really haven't. You know, I mean, we've we've actually had uh, pretty much the same people from the city that have been on the on the uh, represented the city uh, city on the airport authority. Uh, we have had uh, a, a couple of changes on the county just because people come and go, and we have a new uh, new chair now because Marshall Freud uh, retired. Uh, come, well, a couple of years now, and uh, mm -hmm. John Knorr now is, is our chair. So, uh, so we've had some changes in the board makeup on the county and uh, to the at large, but the city has been pretty stable for the last couple of years. And we should note, I mean, if taxpayers did have any kind of concerns in terms of management of the funds, they're elected, the four are elected, so there's the two from the city and the two mm -hmm. from the county. So they kind of, the, the voters kind of control that to a certain sure. degree. How, what is the process for getting the new chair? How was, how was John kind of selected? Was there an interview <laughs> process or? Well, you know, that's one of the things, you know, we had, we, had, uh, we had rules to operate under when it was the commission. And uh, so we're still kind of in the infancy stages of, of developing our bylaws for the authority. And so we, we're trying to kind of fold in the way we used to do things. And some things need to be changed. Some things need to just be rewritten or clarified. Uh, so it was a little bit of a challenge uh, getting through that, but uh, I think the end result was great. We got a, we got a great chair and uh, I think the process is going, but we, that's one of the things we need to work on in the next year or two is, mm -hmm. is kind of just uh, getting the bylaws mm -hmm. all sorted out. And yeah, and he, even though the airport authority did the groundwork by advertising for the position, doing interviews, and finding a candidate, it still had to be taken back to both the county board and the city council okay. for approval. Okay for that individual Correct. that was selected. Okay, yep. interesting. And now if I remember right, John actually has pretty good history in terms of airport commissions and stuff like that as well. Yep, he does. Yeah, okay. he has prior experience on an airport uh, commission or authority, but he also is a pilot, you know. Um, a lot of people think if you, you have to be a pilot to be on the, uh, the airport authority, and uh, to my knowledge, uh, he's the first one that I've worked I with think. that has been a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, you don't always have elected officials that actually are pilots, so, uh, but it, it, it is very interesting to be on it, but like I said, it is a learning curve. There's a lot of uh, acronyms and just a lot of things. It's a different funding process, and uh, thankfully we have people like Van and now Karen that, uh, that, 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 that can figure it out for us, you know, and, and let us know. And we should say Van is Harold Van Harold Lewin. Van, He's yeah. the previous yes. airport manager. Yeah. And you actually got to work under Van or with Van for several years yep. as he prepared to move on. And so that had to be nice for the commission and the airport authority to know that, you know, she has seen and operated through that transition. It was a smooth transition because yeah. she just kind of moved right into it. And <laughs> so we hope she stays a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what is it that's facing the airport these days that you guys have really been kind of focusing on as you kind of head into the, the beginnings of the future? 
Well, it's a hangar project. I know that we've got a kind of a special meeting coming up soon, so we can get the, the funding to move forward with that. Okay. Uh, I mean, Karen, maybe can talk a little bit more of that because it's uh, it's it's happening very soon. It uh, is. Yep. What we hope is is that there will be two um, T hangar buildings that could have up to 20 units. Okay. Um, and then we are also looking at a project that could expand on the west side of the airport to add a couple of new taxiways and a ramp to where a business could build a hangar and base their planes or their maintenance operation there and kind of open up a whole new uh, area of the airport to expand into. The other project that we're really uh, excited about is a snow removal equipment building. I mean, we've been operating out of a 1940s, I think it is, era hangar, retrofitted. Uh -huh. And I always kind of say that the guys play Tetris when they put the equipment <laughs> back into the shed. And so we hope that project will go this year. And um, that's being funded through the FAA's AIP, which is the Federal Aviation Administration's Airport Improvement Program. And every year the airport gets a million dollars in this grant funding. And to have that stable funding source, like Ron was mentioning, to have that local match is, is extremely important. That's how we can get these capital improvement projects done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at these hangar projects and the potential for housing, you know, a, a private plane here or a company's plane here, is that something that you've heard from companies that would be appreciated on site? Absolutely, we have. Yep. Okay. And so the more um, manufacturing and companies that come to town, that's one of the requirements. A lot of them have their own planes. Oh, okay. Uh, they either want to have them here or they fly in, like Menards has a plane that mm -hmm. they fly in with. And, uh, okay. and so uh, it's important for an airport to uh, pay close attention to that general aviation part of it. Ron, when we were talking earlier, you had said a stat that I thought that you know, the public would really be interested in hearing about the percentage of people who drive to Bemidji. Yeah, we were, we were talking with Visit Bemidji about where, where people come from when they visit uh, our town. and. Uh, uh, a little less than 80%, 79%, I think they said, drove to town, uh, which leaves 21% for, uh, since we don't have train passenger <laughs> service, uh, it would just be bus, bike, or snowmobile. Uh, I'm guessing most of those are flights. You know, so uh, you could say probably 20% of the visitors in Tubiji fly in. So that's okay. a very impressive number. Okay, interesting. So is there any way to tell, you know, in terms of the percentage that come in for work purposes versus leisure? leisure. I mean, is there any kind of studies that have kind of looked into that? We, we've looked at a couple and we believe it's just a little less than half that come for business. Okay, okay, interesting. Yep. And when we talked earlier about the companies that do have their private planes, you, you mentioned Menards and stuff like that. Are there bigger local employers that do that as well that we could talk about? Or? Well, I guess I'm not sure of all of them that have them or even all of them that would like to have them there. I know there are a few. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Pace to Development, which is yeah. uh, Johannesson's Marketplace yeah. Foods. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Air Corps Aviation, they have their hangar business out there. They have their um, manufacturing facility down in the industrial park, but the, when they actually assemble, reassemble the planes, that's at the airport. Um, there's a couple of other businesses that are based there. And of course we have um, Enbridge Energy. They have based a helicopter within the mm -hmm. last year. Um, we have two um, air ambulances, uh, Sanford's and uh, North Memorials. Mm -hmm. And they have both been very successful. Okay. So as you've become an airport authority now and you know you've got your nice gel, you've been together for about seven years, do you mm -hmm. think you have a good strong mix now in terms of the expertise? You said it takes a while to get that learning curve kind of accomplished. I think we do. You know, we, uh, you know, because we're made up of mostly elected officials, you're always at the, uh, the mercy of the, of the polls mm -hmm. and of the voters. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, some government entities just like to move their people around with the different appointments also. But uh, I think it's important for a lot of, of, of the stability and having the people in the position. So we don't change it unless uh, for some reason they, 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 they get off the, right. the, the board or the, or the council. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think otherwise it's good to keep it in there just for the maintain the consistency. From the city council's perspective, you know, you've been there a long time, and I think the other representative for the city, is it Roger Hulquist? Roger Hulquist, and he okay. still has two years remaining in his uh, his term, so uh, okay. I'm, I'm actually up this year, but uh, uh, I am running on a post, so I do like my odds this fall. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so hopefully that we'll have, uh, uh, our city reps will stay intact for the next two years for sure. Yeah. And we should note that all the meetings of the airport authority are open to the public. Yes, People absolutely. come. In fact, they're pretty highly attended on occasion from different sectors of public and private enterprises. Yeah. And that's changed too. Yeah. Our room is full now. You know, I think there's a lot more interest <laughs> and there's a lot more people coming to the meetings. And it used to be that uh, it was just the commission and that was it. So mm -hmm. uh, I think like a lot of things, I think the, you know, the word gets out uh, and there's a lot, we're, 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 we're just doing a lot more things that involve the public and uh, there's a lot more interest. So that's good. Would you say most people come to kind of listen and hear what's going on or are they coming to give you input or kind of a combination thereof? I think it's a combination. You know, most times it's hearing what the commission has or the airport authority has to say. But on occasion, um, we do have people that give input that we always, at the very beginning, ha acknowledge guests if we have any. And anybody who wants to address the authority is certainly welcome. Okay. When do you guys meet? Well, usually. Usually. We, <laughs> we meet on Wednesdays. Okay. Wednesdays at 5. Okay, uh, the third Wednesday of the month. Yeah, okay. third Wednesday. And I'm assuming that's at the airport. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We have a very nice meeting room. That was part of our expansion. And it gets used for other things, too, it but it's a, it's a lot more, uh, uh, it's bigger, it accommodates more technology and, and things. So it's, it's a very good place to meet. Is it a good opportunity for people who don't typically fly in and out of Bemidji to kind of just come in and see what the airport has to offer, too, to just see the the availability of space. Yep, yep absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So um, who goes about, you got the agendas, you come together for the Wednesdays. Are those publicized in advance so people can kind of try to keep an eye as to what will be discussed? Yep, the agendas are sent out about a week ahead of time and we have a um, list, uh, an email list that it goes out. It's posted on um, I think it's on the city's uh, weekly newsletter, oh, okay. um, but certainly if people have items that they would li like us to address, they, we can, mm -hmm. um, and it's always... But it's certainly there if people want to yes. kind of find out what's going on, what you guys are talking about. If I remember right, you usually talk about emplainments and information details about the popularity or busyness of the airport. Yep, every, we have a consent agenda that includes minutes from last meeting, our financial reports, employments, and then there's always reports on projects, um, any new business, old business that comes up, any requests for proposals that we're putting out. Um, then there's a little section for employee news. I kind of like to say what the people that actually work at the, for the authority are up to. And then there's always the chairman's comments. Okay, great. Well, I want to thank you both for joining us today on Lakeland Currents. I think we've learned quite a bit about the airport and the history of the commission and the airport authority. So thank you both. Thank you for watching. Uh, please tune in next time. Mm -hmm.